Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a floor and ceiling equation. So two in one. Now, how do we solve this equation? First of all, notice that the floor value rounds it the number down and the ceiling value rounds it up. So we're talking about the same number. So exponents are going to be integers. Second, you, you probably noticed that if X is an integer, this is not going to work because you're adding two integers, you will never get 175 over eight. So what are we supposed to do? We're going to test non-integer values. So for this purpose, we're going to use intervals. And those intervals are just going to be strict inequalities. So let's get started. And for the sake of simplicity, let's start with the positive intervals. And then I'll tell you what happens when x is less than 0. All right, cool. So let's start with x is between 0 and 1 then. What happens if x is between 0 and 1? As you know, the floor value is going to be 0. So think about num a number like 0 0.5. So you're going to get something like uh, 0 from the floor value and 1 from the ceiling value. So you're going to get something like this. x to the power 0 plus x to the power 1 is equal to 175 over 8. Well, x to the power 0 means x. I mean 1. Correction. Uh, so it's going to be 1 plus x equals 175 over 8. And then you're going to subtract 1 from both sides. And that's going to give you 167 over 8, which is uh, greater than 20. So x cannot be in this interval contradiction. We don't have any solutions on this interval. Now we're going to check the next interval. And trust me, this is not going to take forever. Okay, in finite time. So if x is between 1 and 2, what's going to happen is that the floor value, so something like 1.6, for example, the floor value of x is going to be 1 and the ceiling value is going to be 2. As you know, those are consecutive integers and we want this to equal 175 over 8. So think about this quadratic. It's going to be quadratic, right? Something like 8x squared plus 8x squared plus 8x equals 175. Now, you got to think about something here. x is between 1 and 2, so something like 1.5. Now, try to substitute 1.5, you know, in this interval. And obviously, this is kind of like a parabola, right, that has, a, what is it called, the vertex at negative 1 half. So in the positive range, it's always going to be increasing function. So if it does work, it should work uh, like for uh, any value in this interval. It's just going to have a single solution, right? So for example, if x is equal to something like 1.5, if x equals 1, you're going to get 16. If x equals 2, you're going to get something like 32 plus 16. So you'll never reach 175. It's too small. And you probably already noticed that if x is between 1 and 2, then you'll you notice that x squared is between 1 and 4. And if you add these values up, you're going to get something between 2 and 6. So it's not going to work. OK, that interval didn't work either. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the next interval. OK, what is the next interval? All right, let's see what happens. If x is between 2 and 3, what happens? Then the floor value of x is going to be at 2 and the ceiling value is going to be at 3. So we're going to be getting something like this, which looks pretty complicated, doesn't it? Well, this is a cubic equation, Cardano and all that stuff. We're not going to go into those. Don't worry. We're going to solve this problem in a really nice way. I think the solution of this equation is interesting. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply first. So I should get 8x cubed plus 8x squared is equal to 175. And then let's put everything on the same side and put it here. 8x cubed plus 8x squared minus 175 is equal to 0. Now, I know some of you are probably going to talk about the rational root theorem. You're going to look at the divisors, blah, blah, blah. But I want to make this equation even easier to solve. So for that purpose, I'm going to make this equation monic. What does monic mean? Monic means the leading coefficient is 1. So wouldn't that be nice instead of 8x cubed if we had x cubed? then you could just look at the divisors of 175. But is there a way to do it? Yes, there is. So here's how we go. I'm going to write 8x cubed as 2x quantity cubed and write the 4x, uh, did I say 4? Okay, I, you know what I'm talking about, right? Well, I meant to say 4x squared times 2. Okay, great. So 2 times 4x squared, and obviously 4x squared can be written as a power of 2x. That's what's really cool about it. So now my equation turns into a monic if I make a substitution. And that substitution is what? That substitution is saying that, okay, why don't we call u equals 2x? Great. Now, this gives us u cubed plus 2u squared minus 100. 
75 is equal to 0. Now you might be thinking, is this equation easier to solve? Definitely. Now, you're going to be looking at factors of 175, and obviously 1 is a factor, but it's not going to work. 5 is a factor, you can test it out. What other factors do we have? 175 can be written as 5 times 35, right? So definitely 7 is another factor. You can plug in 7, it could be a negative 7. So you're basically going to be testing all these values. And when you replace u with 5, let's see what happens, right? Abracadabra, hocus pocus. 5 cubed is going to be 125. 5 squared is 25. If you plug it in, you're going to notice that you get a 0. Great. So that means u equals 5 is a solution. Awesome. But not only that, this is a cubic equation, so there might be other solutions. But what happens is, if you go ahead and take this, you know, and then just divide whatever method you want, polynomial division or otherwise, divide this by u minus 5, and you'll, you'll get a quadratic, but that quadratic equation will not have real roots. So we are, we're getting two complex roots, which we don't care about, because we're looking for real solutions, because we're dealing with floor and ceiling values. Great. So now u equals 5 is a valid solution, but u is a dummy variable. So 2x equals 5, because u equals 2x, remember? So from here, we basically get the only solution. Why did I say the only solution? I should be checking the other ones as well, right? Well, let's go ahead and write it down first. x equals 5 halves. Okay, so this is a valid solution. What happens if x is in a different interval? Say x is between 3 and 4, right? We have to check that, don't we? Okay, let's check it out. So if x is between 3 and 4, then you should be getting something like x cubed plus x to the fourth is equal to 175 over 8. Now here's one thing that you're going to realize. When you have numbers that are in this interval, you raise them to the fourth power and to the third power and add them up, you'll never get 175 over 8. Basically, from this point on, the values are going to be so large that they'll never meet again. All right. So what that means is that x equals 5 halves is the only solution to this equation. Well, we didn't check the negatives, right? Let's go ahead and check them out. Well, if x becomes negative, notice that we have x to the power floor of x plus x to the power ceiling of x, and that is equal to 175 over 8. Obviously, when x is negative, you're going to be getting powers like x to the power negative 1, x to the power negative 2, negative 3, so on and so forth. So this is going to become like a reciprocal equation, right? So you're going to get, for example, if I was solving this equation, you know, something like this, I could easily replace 1 over x with y and then solve the same equation pretty much for y and then flip it once you, have, once you find y because y is equal to 1 over x and that would give you the reciprocal of 5 halves, which is 2 fifths, but 2 fifths is not a negative value. So none of those values that you find in the negative region are going to work and x, as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, you're going to notice that these, uh, the sum is going to get smaller and smaller. So you'll never get a solution there either, which means that the only solution to this equation is x equals 5 halves. And that brings us to the end of this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.